back home now and the Victorian government has just days to prove to Canberra it didn't break the law when it allowed cattle back into the Alpine National Park. State Labor banned the practice six years ago due to concerns for the environment. The coalition says a small trial will prove whether those concerns are real. James Bennett travelled to Victoria's high country to investigate. There's only one way to round up cattle in Victoria's high country, on horseback. Charlie Lovick's family have been doing it for five generations. It was handed down to me as a passion to protect this country and I believe that the only way you'll reduce this fuel load now is to strategically graze it. Charlie Lovick was one of six cattlemen allowed to bring cattle back to the Alpine National Park just seven weeks after the election of the Bayview government. Cattle were banned from the National Park in 2005. Now 400 cattle have been allowed back as part of a scientific trial to determine whether grazing reduces the severity of bushfires. My contention is that if the cattle are here early enough in the season, they keep this down and it's very short and it prolongs its growth pattern. It doesn't run to seed because we haven't let it. It's about like mowing your lawn at home. It really sounds a bit like Japanese scientific whaling. Basically, you want to do something, so you cloak it in science. The study has little support from environmentalists and scientists. 125 scientists have signed a letter to the federal government arguing that the trial breaches the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. They've also questioned its relevance and scientific credibility. The federal environment minister, Tony Burke, has made his position clear. This is the first time in living memory that a state government has deliberately introduced an invasive species, has deliberately introduced an animal that's not an Australian animal into a national park. Our national parks are there for Australian animals. And it might come as a surprise to the Victorian government, but cattle don't qualify as Australian native animals. The National Parks Association and other environment groups have asked the Environment Minister to use his powers to stop the trial. Well, you can see there are cow pats here, there's cattle trampling where we're going and then they go right into the, into the wetter areas here. Um, they break up the structure of the wetland, uh, they, they introduce weeds as well. Essentially for a scientific trial to protect this place, we're bringing in something that Everybody knows 60 years of science shows that it damages. CSIRO scientist Dick Williams spent weeks walking the Bogong High Plains after the 2003 fires, which burnt more than half the high country. What I did was wandered about the countryside, so a lot of, uh, a lot of walking uh, along transect lines, stopping at uh, sort of random places and recording whether the country had been burnt or not. What he found was that grazed areas burnt in the same way as ungrazed areas. From our findings on the Bogong High Plains and our years of study up there, it's quite clear that cattle graze selectively. They're not going to eat everything that's there and almost certainly not going to eat some of the major fuel components, that is the woody shrubs, the bark and the litter and, and leaves that are coming out of the canopies of the, of, of the woodlands. Lead up, table. That's why many scientists and environmentalists believe the current trial is not about science, but about politics. There was a political promise to bring the cattle back to the high country. In last November's state election, independent Craig Ingram lost his seat of Gippsland East. The National Party won the seat back after promising the Mountain Cattlemen's Association it would return cattle to the Alpine National Park. There are a number of issues, I think, that uh, were pertinent to our success in Gippsland East, and the Mountain Cattlemen was certainly one of those, uh, but I wouldn't have put it at the top of the list. The trial is being undertaken by Professor Mark Adams, who declined to be interviewed. Victoria's Department of Sustainability and Environment has been tasked with managing it. This research is to answer the question once and for all, is cattle grazing effective in fuel management and bushfire risk management in the Alps? This is an election commitment. We've been asked to implement it. To implement it, we need to do research. 
This week, Peter Appleford was accused of blackmailing the University of Melbourne. Support the trial or jeopardise state government funding. In a statement, Environment Minister Ryan Smith said the report took emails from Mr Appleford out of context. The federal government has given Victoria until mid next week to prove the trial meets environmental standards. There's a separate question as to whether or not it also breaches federal law. But I can see from the damage that's already been done in just a few weeks the urgency of me receiving that advice. The Greens are trying to force his hand. They've introduced a private member's bill to ban the trial. If they thought that they could get away with doing this just to satisfy a political deal and without people standing up for the integrity of the environment and the integrity of the park, um, then they uh, probably had a complete misreading of how much people in Victoria care about places like the Alpine National Park. It's an argument which doesn't sit well with cattlemen who've seen their remote and isolated way of life give way to an alpine tourism industry. The Mount Buller Ski Resort was very nearly engulfed by bushfires which swept through the Alps in 2006. The cattlemen say its near miss is proof there's more at stake than just vulnerable plants and animals in the Alps. But they also argue that the ski runs and chalets carved into the mountainside make it difficult to accept complaints about the environmental damage done by cattle. My forebears were the first people to take anybody onto Buller. They built the first huts, they took the first skiers there. We've changed everything about that mountain and when it's convenient we say, well, we're getting too many skiers, we better take a few more snow gums out. That's OK. It's not OK to have 50 head of cattle out here on 5,000 hectares.